Welcome to Chesscape, guys. Uh, today I'm going to show you the variation with Bishop G5, which is a sideline of the King's Indian, because I noticed in my career that I was spending a lot less time on the sidelines and my results were pretty bad with the sidelines are really, really good with, with the main line. So actually for you guys, and especially if you play against beginners, you're going to see that uh, they're going to play more the sidelines after this variation, which is the classical King's Indian. These are the moves that we know, and usually the main move here is to play e4, and we know we have to play with d6 and then castle. But now what happens if they play the move bishop g5, for instance? They have a clear target here. They want to play a move like queen d2, and one day bishop h6 after your castle. They will play long castle and start bothering you with moving their pawns and attacking you. This is their plan. Actually, you are framed in your brain to actually, when you know the King's Indian, that you should be attacking with f5 and attacking the king that will be on g1 one day, but actually uh, not against this variation with bishop g5. We're going to be playing more on the queen side when he plays this move without playing the move e4. So put in your mind that actually when he plays with the move e4, we play on the king side with f5, trying to break or push our pawns this way. If not, we're going to be playing more this kind of variations and attacking on the queen side. Okay, so after bishop g5, there are two moves here. Either you play d6 or you play c5. I would say, let me show you d6 first, but I kind of prefer um, c5. I think it's more decisive here to actually equalize the game. Let's go to d6 first. And let's say you keep playing actually the normal king's Indian defense by playing d6. Now, what if he plays queen d2? Queen d2 is not the best move here. I would say the best move here would be a move like knight f3. But if he plays queen d2, you have to defend straight away by playing h6. Don't make the mistake to actually castle here. Uh, if you castle here, now you cannot play h6 anytime soon, and he can just play e4, and then he's going to be playing this kind of moves, right? h4, h5, and trying to break and uh, trying to put pressure along the h file after long castling so you have to be careful about this so once he plays the move queen d2 you know that you have to play h6 and if he plays bishop f4 you keep bothering the, um, the bishop your strongest piece here with the, on the king's indian is this bishop that has an amazing diagonal and you want him to control the dark square so what we want to do is that we want to get rid of this dark square bishop to be able to control the dark squares with black ourselves if he goes bishop e3 you simply play um so by going bishop e3 he's saying i don't want to go on g3 because you would grab and actually i lose my bishop so i want to do everything i can to actually keep it but actually this variation doesn't cause any problem if you know this move that is e5 and it can seem a little bit like unnatural when you look at it because your king is still in the center and you're saying, okay, I want to open the center. Usually we don't do this as a rule. But in this variation, it kind of works because even if he takes takes and he long castle, it's going to be an end game here uh, that is actually pretty favorable for black. It's a good position. He can play this or if he plays a move like knight b5, it really doesn't bother you. I mean, attacking c7 because you simply long castle and you're protecting the pawn. And one day he simply goes back home and uh, we have an amazing position. We have um, the d file. This rook will come in play as well. And also we have this amazing f5 e and, and e4. We, we have kind of like more control over the center. And especially this move is, um, is crucial in this game. And our pieces are great. This bishop here has a clear target that is on the king. So that's that's a great variation. So you shouldn't be really worried about playing this move that is e5. If you don't play e5, it's going to be it's going to be more uh, complicated. But here, yeah, you can play this. And if he plays a move like I don't know something like d5, doesn't really bother us. He's blocking the center. But you can play either knight a5 or knight e7. I would say knight e7 is a little bit safer here. And one day you're going to be playing f5. And look what happens with this bishop. The biggest problem now if he plays the bishop on e3 is that the pawn cannot move. So this bishop is blocked. This is the biggest problem. So when you go after, you know, castle and f5 uh, and f4, it's going to be, he's going to be in trouble. And black is already better here by not doing much. Okay. All right. 
So if he plays knight f3 now, um, I recommend you still play h6 and now you play g5. I know again is against the principles because most likely you're going to castle short and it's going to bother it's going to bother you to actually have this kind of structure because you think it's weak, but not really here. It's super important to actually get rid of the dark square bishop for our dark square bishop to be in play and to be, you know, to have some sort of supremacy over the chessboard. So after bishop g3, this is what we do. So the plan is pretty simple. We just try to get rid of actually this bishop. Um, he plays e3 and now you try to break the center. So you see everything plays on the dark squares. We try to get rid of this because if the pawn on d4 is not there, then this bishop has a clear target. And also with the queen, we can come here with a double attack, etc. If he plays bishop e2, we simply exchange, we exchange, and we play knight c6. That's a great position for, um, for black here. As you can see, I mean, the, the king is really not in danger. We're asking a question now. Uh, one day we will play queen a5. We can also play, for instance, a move like... Queen b6. That's also um, that's also possible. Uh, the bishop most likely will come on d7 and most likely long castle. And look at this piece. This piece is actually really a monster in this position. Has clear potential. I mean, this bishop is horrendous. He doesn't have any threat. And as you can see, I mean, black don't have any sort of um, weakness actually in their pawn chain as well. And we will be able to attack one day the c4 pawn because this file is open when the rook comes here one day. He can decide to play the move e4 as well. So we saw the move queen d2, we saw the move knight f3, and there is now the move e4. e4 just transposes us into the main variation, the main line. Because once you play uh, castle... Oh, something I forgot to say as well is that when he plays the move bishop g5, what he's saying is that he doesn't want to take a decision in the center. So it means he, still, he can still play the same -ish variation, for instance. Because now if you play d6, no, not queen d2, but e4, and you play castle, he can still play this move, right? Because he didn't put the knight on f3. He leaves basically all the options open. Before, we keep playing just normal chess, which, uh, I mean, our normal way of playing, which is this. And now he can go knight f3, for instance, but we're going to play like a move like h6. Uh, that would be very dangerous to play e5 here, which is the move that we play without the bishop being here when the bishop is on e2, right? Now we can't, we lose because he can simply take. And uh, after knight take e4, we don't have actually this move with uh, this cover where actually we grab the knight after he grab ours. We simply have to play h6 first and he goes bishop h4 and here we're just going to play g5 and bishop g3. And uh, we, we play this way and knight h5 and this is perfectly fine for, for black here. You know, he's going to try to actually long castle here and this is, this is an okay position. I mean, you can play with c5 and you're fine trying to open open the bishop. And um, if he plays a move, for instance, like d5, then you're fine. You develop your pieces, knight d7. You wait, actually, to grab this one because you want him to try and play, for instance, a move like h4 and then you grab. So, for instance, let me show you. If he plays h4 here, what you can do is take the, take the, take the bishop and then actually close the position with g4. And this is nice because you're not opening the h file for him and he has a bad structure. And then one day you will play with f5 and try to punish actually the king that is in the center here. And also you have a complete grab over the dark squares with your bishop, which is pretty nice. If he plays a move like knight h2, for instance, you have a lot of moves. You can play knight e5 to defend this, right? You can play f5 as well. But I would say just to move knight e5 and black are doing extremely, extremely fine here. I mean, as you can see, there is no clear targets for white and they cannot really enter the position. Um, it's going to be so we're going to be the one breaking either with this or this. We have a lot of play here. OK, he has another way of playing, which is e3. And I noticed that actually most uh, most players, recreationals, especially in blitz games, they're going to be playing e3. They don't want to actually advent go on adventurous, you know, and like play the move e4 because they feel maybe that it, you know, threatens their pawn chain and their pawns are, you know, like not so powerful. Now I have a plan for you. The, the plan is to, pl is to play this move. This move is really great because it allows you to really take full control of the board with all your pieces. The idea with this move is to play queen a5. And as you can see, you have a lateral attack and you will have a pin. 
So the queen on a5 will be really great in this position. We will put the bishop on g4 and the queen on a5 and the knight on d7 and try to break in the center. So let me show you how this goes. If he plays bishop d3, queen a5. Now the bishop is attacked, so he has to defend it by playing knight f3. And now this was the ID. Now there is... Ooh, that was a very bad arrow. Now there is a pin, right? You're targeting actually to just basically take the knight and then basically take the bishop, right? So if he plays bishop h4, to avoid this, you have this nice move again, queen h5. You're targeting again, so you're winning temp some tempi against him. And if he plays a move like queen b3 to try to, uh, to target this, you should just play b6. You can't just go crazy and like be like, okay, I'm winning a piece by taking... Because if he takes the bishop, I take his, so I'm winning a piece. That's a little bit dangerous. Um, that doesn't work here because of queen take b7 and you have this, right? And um, yeah, even if you castle, for instance, here, he can grab the rook, but he can also do bishop take f6 first. To play the, this move, b6 first, you solidify actually, you know, the the b file. And this is this position is fine. Uh, it goes like this, castle, and you have an amazing position with black. I mean, not an amazing position, but considering you're playing with black, I mean, you equalized and, uh, you know, you will have some moves like this, knight c6, and uh, try to break the center. The king is in the center. You're going to try to bring the rooks in play here. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a good position for black and enjoyable to play. After the variation knight f3, he can play. So now we have to play, we know, h6 and try to uh, bother the dark square bishop and get rid of it. Right, and if he plays e3, we know we counter in the center by playing c5 and putting pressure on the dark squares. Now we analyze actually this move that was bishop e2. They can also decide to um, block the center by playing d5 straight away. And here you play with queen a5 again and put pressure. So you're targeting actually bishop takes c3 here, pawn take, queen take, and most likely uh, the rook will be in danger. Um, okay. <clears throat> After queen c2, you have knight bd7, and you bring actually the pieces this way. I like this plan very much. So you're going to do knight d7, knight b6, and one day knight a4, because as you can see, this is the piece that is in danger here because of the knight, uh, because of the pin of the queen, because of the bishop. So you start by playing knight d7, keep this in mind, bishop e2, knight b6, and now you grab because once he moves this knight the bishop is attacking the is attacking the knight so once he moves we get rid finally of this and we play bishop d7 solidifying actually this square with the bishop and to play a move like knight a4 after this yeah that's the idea and when he plays this you play b5 so as you can see with bishop g5 variation you're not really playing with black on the on the king side this is kind of an exception where you're going to be playing on the queen side and putting pressure because he decided not to castle with white. So uh, <clears throat> you shouldn't attack on the king side before he basically short castles, right? So that's the variation. And to be honest, that's an amazing Benko. It's a really hard position for him to play and find the best moves. I mean, I don't find this super natural, for instance. I mean, my bishop is extremely, extremely strong. This rook will come here one day. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a good position for black to play. He has a pressure for the time being on c4 he has to deal with. And um, yeah, okay, so let's go back. What happens? So this was after d6. So this is if we decide after the move bishop g5 to play a move like d6. Now, instead of playing d6, I actually recommend to play c5 and um, to be a little bit more sharp attacking actually this d4 pawn and actually we punish the fact that he didn't play <clears throat> that he didn't play e4 so now we want to put pressure on this and we want to open up actually the king's indian bishop c5 uh, on for instance let me show you on d takes c5 this is not um this is not a good move you can simply play a move like knight a6 here trying to grab again um and he cannot really defend it. He's going to play a move like e4, for instance, in this variation. And uh, you can just take on c5 and you have a good position. You're coming with tempo because you're targeting this pawn twice. 
And uh, if you play a move like this, you just play d6. And look, I mean, this is a great position. He always has to be careful with the b2 pawn, so he cannot just, you know, chase you this way because this bishop is becomes super powerful, right? So not easy, not easy to play. So, and if he decides to play a move like d5, we continue the same plans, which is bothering the, bothering the bishop. And queen a5 is always kind of like the same plan that we're playing with black, which is putting our queen on a5, this knight that comes sometimes here, sometimes here. Um, we kind of bother the, um, the bishop again, the knight comes on h5, etc. So it's always like the same plans. And this is what I like to show you guys, so you don't have to study too much uh, to play this. Uh, as you know, he couldn't play here, for instance, a move like e4, right? Because knight take e4 because this is pinned, all right? So, on queen d2, he's giving your instructions. He's saying, okay, maybe I want a long castle in this position. You go d6, and now he plays e4 as well. And that, that was another idea, is that he was unpinning himself to play e4, and you don't have knight take e4 anymore, right? So, e4, and now you go with the same plan again. And instead of actually grabbing the bishop this way, because <clears throat> the problem is that if you take the bishop here and he takes with the pawn, you opened up actually his H file. And one day this can be a problem for us. This bishop can come here, for instance, with some target on the king. This You can have some uh, tactic teams. Instead, we try to actually just play knight f4. Knight f4 means this bishop doesn't play anymore. He doesn't have any control over the e5 square. For instance, we're targeting g2, so it's extremely hard for him to actually keep the knight <clears throat> on f4. He has to do something about it, because playing a move like king f1 to defend g2 is not really viable. And um, yeah, so he decides to, um, if he takes, takes. Okay, so the queen cannot take, obviously, right? Let me show you. If the queen takes, simply bishop takes c3 is winning straight away, because if you take, you lose the, you lose the rook. Okay, so, so the pawn cannot be taken um, after this. He plays knight f3, and we simply develop our pieces, bishop g4. The, 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 the move bishop g4 here is to get rid of everything that can control the e5 square. What we want with black in this position, so I, expl I explain a, a little bit the themes, is to control the, to control the dark squares here. This is what we want with this bishop. So this knight was bothering us. He's controlling these squares. So it's amazing to exchange it to have full control of the dark squares. Okay. So when he castles, we take it and we play bishop e5. And now we kind of have a lock on the position because as you can see, I mean, what are really the, the threats that white have against us in this position? I mean, this bishop could be a pawn, seriously. I mean, it wouldn't make any difference. He doesn't have any uh, prospect. Um, the queen has a better square than this one. This knight, we don't know where he can go, but he doesn't have any threat. We have a clear target, which is to play rook g8 and bothering this. We're going to play knight d7, most likely long castle, bring the other rook at some point, putting a rook here, another one here and have a sort of plan this way. We can even like, you know, sometimes come back with the queen and play a move like this when the rook is here and have this kind of thematic plans with queen h3 when the pawn on g2 um, is pinned, for instance. But, I mean, for black, is a dream to arrive in this position with, um, I mean, after move, uh, after move 14, for sure. So, all right. You don't want to show you something else. Um, this was after knight f3. All right, guys. So that's it for bishop g5 variation. Um, I think it's extremely important to know that you are playing more on the queen side and try to uh, counter attack uh, in the center with your pawns, even with the king in the center with black. These are the two ideas that I want you to keep in mind, that your play suddenly is not on the king's side when he plays bishop g5, but more on the queen's side, and then you, can, you have to counter by playing, uh, by playing in the center. I want to show you one last variation as well, 
which is after e3 and take take and play for instance a move like d5 okay so that's another one where here you you can tell me okay so if he takes on f6 he can just grab this pawn for free but that's a theme I want you to get. I want you guys to know when he takes. Yes, he's one pawn up. We simply and we lose a tempo by playing bishop g7. But what happens now is that d4 doesn't have anyone to protect him, and this bishop is a clear monster. This knight now has this square to come on c6. This bishop is free to play anywhere he wants. This is a great position to play for black and. Believe it or not, black is already better here with a pawn down. I mean, if they play a move like, I don't know, bishop e2, for instance, they're going to be in trouble. That's going to be knight c6. Now we're targeting this. If he plays knight f3 to defend it, for instance, now bishop g4, we're threatening to take the knight and then grab on d4. And as you can see, it's extremely, extremely hard to play for um, for white. They can castle, for instance, and we castle or we take on f3. That doesn't, doesn't really matter here. And here you can take straight away or you can wait and just put your king safe and take on the next move because you cannot defend this pawn anymore. And you have a great position with black because if you place a move like knight e3, you can take on d4, uh, queen take or knight take d4, it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, I mean, black at least equalized, but I believe they are a little bit better because the pieces are better, actually, uh, in this position. So, so if he takes the pawn on b7, that doesn't work because of rook b8. And now black is extremely, extremely well in this position. Um, it's not easy to know where to put the bishop, but let's say the, the natural square is going to be bishop e4 here and rook take b2. And uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to actually keep these pawns because I'm going to come in play with, you know, queen c7. This rook will come in play. We're going to put uh, pressure. I think the end game here is uh, much, much better for black already. All right, guys, so that was the sideline with bishop g5. You have more ideas now to know how to maneuver when, they, when these guys are playing you online. And uh, I'll see you on the next one for the... <clears throat> and I'll see you on the next one.